at the aquarium, one of the most amazing exhibits I found wasn't about fish. It was about the shorebirds. Those amazing sh shorebirds? I don't, what, what, huh? <laughs> yes, Sam. Those shorebirds are pretty amazing. I was just sketching the beach exhibit and noticing the tiny circle of life there. The fish, the plants, and the birds all in perfect harmony. And then I read about the incredible journey shorebirds take to such habitats, to such stages, even if only for a few days. Stages? That's right, Sam. The beach habitats that host the shorebirds on their migration journeys, which may be up to 15,000 miles, are technically known as staging sites. Staging meaning where the birds rest and feed to get ready for their long, long flight. Let me show you how this works. We'll take a look at the red knot. This shorebird travels 9,000 miles each year from its nesting grounds in Canada to its wintering grounds in Tierra del Fuego. Along the way, the red knot always returns to a few key migration staging sites. You can actually think about these stopping points as stages because of the intense drama that unfolds when they get there. Here you can see what a real stage looks like. Literally thousands of red knots descend on this beach every May. They are literally starving from their 5,000 mile journey from their previous staging site in Brazil. At the same time, thousands of horseshoe crabs are emerging from deep in the bay to lay their eggs on the sandy beach. The stage is set. The knots feast and feast for two weeks, gobbling down 25,000 little eggs a day and going through one of the most radical weight gain diet plans in the animal kingdom. Yes, the amazing shorebirds. Yes, and the amazingly delicate shorebird migration. As you've seen from the red knot, everything has to go off without a hitch. From the birds landing to the horseshoe crabs laying millions of eggs, some of those eggs remaining unburied because there are so many of them. But climate change puts this whole process and the stage it plays out on in jeopardy. So over this amazing migration route, we have the atmosphere which is increasing in CO2 content like a thickening blanket. The increase in heat trapped by this blanket means that oceans will rise as they get warmer. Studies suggest that by the year 2100, between 20 and 70 percent of today's coastal mudflats, like the one in the Delaware Bay where the red knots and horseshoe crabs meet, will be underwater. Also, since the blanket is trapping more energy in the atmosphere, that means storms will become more extreme and disrupt coastal staging areas. So climate change will cause the red knots feeding ground and the horseshoe crabs mating ground to diminish. With the same number of red knots in a smaller area, there's simply not enough food, and the shorebird populations decline, as some birds simply won't have the energy to complete the grueling round trip between wintering, mating, and feeding grounds. Groups such as the Autobahn Society and the National Wildlife Reserve are working to build these stages back up. And anyone can get involved, helping to plant dune plants, installing dune fencing, or even gathering oyster shells to create habitats where food sources for the shorebirds can grow. It's part of this global cycle that goes back to the small things we do every day to get around, to run things in our home, and to sustain ourselves. Slight but collective changes to these habits connect back to beaches and staging grounds that are so important to animals like the shorebirds.